Hey YouTubes, welcome to GC Impressions. I am of course GC and today I am bringing you my impression of Cyberpunk 2077 strictly on the next gen consoles. Now before I begin, make sure like subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much. So a little history. I have been asked by all you great people to do a review of this game uh, way back in 2020 actually when the game was actually first released. But I decided to hold off for a few reasons. Number one, I wanted to make sure the game was at least playable before I was able to do a review. Number two, when I got my PS5, I decided to wait until it's upgraded to the PS5 since everyone had been saying that the game was better on the new console than the old console. So unfortunately, I'm going with the PS5 version, not the PS4 version. I played the PS4 version and yeah, there's still a ton of issues. Let's be honest here. I'm going to be really upfront front with you guys. This game was not made for PS4. PS4 is a great system. This was not the game for it. Uh, so, but anyway, sorry everyone. So with all my impression videos, you know how this goes. I give you some good, give you some bad, and then of course give you a score out of five with one being, you know, pretty bad one and, and uh, five being perfect. Uh, let's get into the impression. So this is uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So at number five, it's the graphics. So I had to talk about this and say that the game looks fantastic on the PS5. Without a doubt, this game looks so much better on next gen than past gen. Sorry, PS4 users. Night City and the Outer Worlds, like that whole area of the Badlands, looks fantastic with all its different colors, shapes, lights, and is a fantastic city to look over, drive around, and in a sense, explore. One of my favorite things to do as V is to wake up in my apartment and look out at the city. It's one of those things I enjoy. It's like, oh, this is so cool to see every landmark and to see everything. Now, characters are sort of half and half in this category. As some, like River. You wanted to talk? Before the attack, you wanted to talk to Ryan's hustle. Get some info, dude. Pan Am. We'll need backup. We have one brief stop to make on the way. Want to tell me where? Give me a sec. I should call the client. Convince them to leave the bastard hanging. Judy. Well, your BD expert has a better idea. Pleasures of Night City, a domain with its twin on the dark net. Rogue. She can't count on her clan anymore, but she's a true nomad. She knows those lands, and she will help you. Won't have a choice. Won't have a choice? Does not sound enticing. Not for her and not for me. And the voodoo boys. Told me at the chapel you're the one to talk to? Mr. Han sent me. Said you got murk work needs doing. All look good. But then you have characters like Johnny Silverhan. Saul. Done here. All clear. I heard Mitch is alive thanks to you. Thanks to V and Pan Am. They both saved my ass. I just hope he was worth it. And Misty, who still look like last gen models. They don't look bad, but they could be better looking. And lastly is V, who's kind of a mixture of both. He has his, you know, like there's times when I'm looking at him and you can easily see that it was sort of like a last gen model. But then there's other times like those uh, cutscenes that he has with Pan Am that it's like, oh, this looks pretty newish. Other things like weapons, enemies and vehicles all look great and really stand out. So yeah, I am going to give this a good, even if some of the character models are kind of blech, there are some pop, there are enough positive things about the graphics that easily puts it in the good list. Well, I bet you were all waiting for this and probably wanted to be number one, right? Well, on last gen or a year ago, you would have been correct, but I actually seen very little bugs in the game as opposed to before, but there is still some, I have to be clear, there is still some bugs. There's some people glitching right out right in front of you. Flashes of light around some characters. Uh, sometimes people appear just right in front of you or walk on air, which is kind of cool. <laughs> that would be actually something I would like to see. You know, like just having a skill. Walk on air. That'd be awesome. Pan Am sits down like she's on a bike in midair. I hit a small tree while on a bike and went flying through the air. And during my entire playthrough of about 35 hours, I had one crash, just one. That is better 
than the last time I played this one. I had three crashes in about the span of 10 hours. So definitely a lot better. And sure, these are few and far between, but it needs to be mentioned and they need to be fixed. I, I give CD Projekt Red uh, props for actually doing some work on this and making the game playable, but there is still some work that needs to be done with these bugs, glitches, and crashes. Number four, Night City. I love this city. I already mentioned how great it looks, but there's always something going on, whether it's shootouts between police and gangs, random gigs and side quests that randomly pop up, as well as being able to explore and fly, find glitch paintings, racing, fighting gangs, shopping. There's apartments to rent, which is a great addition as well, but also for these apartments, you can sleep, shower, and drink coffee to give you an, uh, an hour bonus. So it's always sometimes a smart idea to go back to your apartment to sleep, uh, to do these things, to sleep, shower, and have a cup of coffee, so you get these bonuses. Overall, the city does look great, and there is always a lot going on. Unfortunately, with a lot going on in the city, there's not really much to do in terms of quote unquote relaxing. You can't go to restaurants, you can't go on dates, you can't go to movies, you can't go bowling, etc, etc, etc. There's nothing like that. CD Projekt Red should add some of these night uh, city activities as it would help expand the city a little more and make it more enjoyable, especially on your downtimes when you don't really want to just do mission, 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 and just want to just kind of like hang out and do kind of nothing. Inside the apartments, like I said, you can eat, shower, sleep, drink coffee, the whole nine yards, but there's no penalties if you don't do them. There's bonuses, which are nice, but you should also have negative effects if you don't do them. Honestly, um, near, I'd say about the 25 hour mark, I kind of just stopped going to my apartment altogether because there was really no point. I don't, there was no penalties of me skipping these things. I would honestly love a drink, sleep and eat survival system as it fits well with sort of this theme. And sure, there's things like watching TV, play pool, play guitar, but that's kind of it. And there's no real reason to do these things other than just for kind of fun. Overall, I think some things should be added both in the world and the apartment. In the, in the world, I would love more relaxing activities like I mentioned. And maybe add some real estate where V can go buy clubs or something. I would also love being able to sort of upgrade and customize your vehicles like you can do with V. For some reason, CD Projekt Red implemented this in apartments and you can customize V at any time in the mirror but you can't upgrade and customize your vehicles. I have a feeling that's common. In the apartments, there could be things like calling up your friends or a romantic partner to come and chill with you, have parties, maybe even some games. We have seen arcade games all over. Why couldn't V have one in his apartment to play? Sorry for going on this a little bit, but I felt that as great as Night City is, there is a ton of stuff missing and CD Projekt Red is going in the right direction with most of its recent patch of 1.5 by adding some interaction in the apartments and expanding romance subplots. But there still needs to be more done. If you, you know, like after a while, I won't lie, the side quests and the jobs and the gigs got boring. I've wanted some relax, relaxing activities to do and there's none to do here. Okay, I know a lot of people are gonna say, really? The combat and perk system, this is good. And yep, for me it is, as there's quite a few ways to play in terms of combat. You can play as a stealth hacker who snipes people from a distance and uses a sword for melee. You can go uh, use a, be a brawling brute who uses a shotgun. You can play a machine gun maniac who uses grenades. The funny thing is, I know a few people who played these type of roles, but me? Uh, I play more of a pistol, shotgun, hacking, bomb throwing nut who charges headfirst into danger and uses blades and melee. Now to be fair, I still use the sniper and the machine gun from time to time, but I was mostly sticking with the pistol and shotgun. I found some great ones and I decided to just stick with those too. With a level cap of 50, you kind of need to pick what and how you want to play. Keep in mind, you can always reset your points as long as you have the eddies or the money. With the RPG element, elements, I love being able to upgrade your main perks, body, reflexes, intelligence, cool, and technical, and using them for conversations and around the city. So for example, someone mentioned something about their vehicle, and if you have enough of the points in that particular skill, 
you can select an option, a special option for which it gives you unique dialogue. That's pretty cool, I do like that. Same goes with using things like force or technical to open a door or intelligence to continue a conversation. I love this feature and should have been implemented a lot more. Another thing I like is the fact you're able to dismantle weapons and clothes on the fly. You can then take parts you get from old weapons and clothes and upgrade your current weapons and clothes to increase armor. There's also different craft schematics that you can get and make those items. Crafting and upgrading items also nets you experience points, so it's pre actually a pretty cool way to level up, not gonna lie. Last thing I like is the minor perks inside the six main perks, and there's a ton here you can choose and how you want to play. There's like athletics, handguns, assault, crafting, stealth, etc, etc, etc. And what's cool about these minor perks is that they all each have their own abilities you can select. Like for handgun, there's skills like high noon, which increases critical chance with pistols by 4%. There's OK Corral, which gives you 50% more damage, etc, etc. And you can also build them up by using these abilities in the game. So for example, I'm using a lot here, I apologize. I used the handgun for a good portion of my fights and I kept getting points that I can use in any of the reflex perks without leveling up. With things like this, it makes the game more enjoyable and gives you a ton of replayability and different ways to play. You don't have to play the same way next time. And that's great. Okay, this is a massive nitpick of not being able to dual wield, and I know, I know it's a not massive nitpick, but it's something I feel should be mentioned, especially when our buddy Jackie does it. And okay, maybe they did this so that the game wouldn't be too easy, fine. So, but why not make it an ability we can unlock in the pistols um, skill and the pistols perk at near the end? That would have been awesome. That would have been great. Maybe have it where you still have, like you, you have three spots slots for your weapons, you have two pistols in those spots, and they are both used for dual wielding. I don't get why games do this. A lot of people I know love to dual wield, so why not have it, especially when Jackie can do it? If you watch the first part of it, Jackie carries around two guns. Why can't we do that? Like I said, nitpick, but it would have been cool to have that particular skill in this game. Uh, number two, characters. CD Projekt Red did again with a wide range of characters. There were maybe one or two I particularly didn't like, but thankfully they weren't around long enough. <laughs> Only one that really kind of annoyed me was T-Bug. And thankfully she gets killed like really early in the game. Now, there are a ton of characters I liked, but I'm only gonna address the five that I liked the best. <laughs> I know, five? Really? Yes, I'm only gonna address the five. Uh, these are five characters I absolutely just loved in this entire game. There is more, but these are my top five. First off, Jackie. How can you not like this guy? He's your homie and comrade who helps you get settled in Night City. He has a soft side and wanted to give Misty a great life. He's loyal to his friends and his death in funeral is some of the hardest to deal with. And this is all from a character that we spent possibly two, three, maybe four hours with, if that. Starting a petition to bring in, a, bring in a Jackie DLC. Comment down below if you want that. I personally would, because this he was just so great in the two to four hours that you know the guy. Second off is Judy. And the first time I saw her, I wanted to do the romance option. Unfortunately, you need to be a female character to do that. Either way, Judy is just one of those characters that is very easy to like and get along with and wants to help out V as much as she can and kind of vice versa. When V, as is, for example, when V rescues Evelyn, you can feel Judy's gratitude and you can tell she trusts V after this, especially when she calls V to come and help and deal with Evelyn's death. That is great writing overall. That's great character building overall. Um, you know, it's just, uh, for me, it's a shame that you just can't romance the character as a male character. You need to be female. Um, I don't really like playing female created characters in games. That's just me, but I might actually do this now just so I can get that romance option with Judy. Number three is River. Surprisingly, you meet this guy via a side quest to find out who murdered the mayor. But boy, his actual side quest flat out is awesome. You go from working with this guy who's just kind of there to being his partner and find out who murdered the mayor as well as locating his nephew. 
you kind of quote unquote team up again for a barbecue dinner with him and you know and along with his sister and kids and this is where you can start the romance if you choose but since i'm on team pan am for you know uh, during this playthrough i decided just remain friends but this is still one guy i actually liked and he kind of he didn't replace jackie but he almost reminded me a little bit of jackie a bit um i would love to have a dlc of river and v doing like pi work that would be awesome Number four is Pan Am, and she has the best character arc in the entire game. There's no doubt there. Basically, she goes from being an outcast from her own family to being a co-leader of the family. That is pretty awesome. There is more, not gonna spoil it though, but for right now, yeah, she becomes co-leader of the family. Now, there is the ability to romance her as well, and let me just talk about that. Her romance, this is one of the weirdest ones because it's both awesome and kind of strange. It starts off the first mission you work together and flirting with her. It kind of grows from there when you make a move on her in an abandoned home while waiting for a storm to pass. Again, you get another chance as you have a talk with her about ta taking risk and even cuddling with her next to a fire. All this is fine, sweet, you know, and it's just really good romance building. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite scenes. These scenes to see is really great. Then you get the big romance sex scene, and that's just weird. This is almost like cringy. I hate to say it because this romance is actually kind of awesome. And this was sort of like, I had this look on my face like, what the hell am I watching? Okay, I won't go in much detail here, but basically you and her are in this sort of tank. You connect, um, you hook up to it together where one person drives, one person shoots. So V connects and tries both. Pan Am hooks up as well and explains that you will feel what she feels, vice versa, and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. This is more weird, like I said, this is really bizarre. I was expecting something a little less low key, not, a, not sex in a friggin' tank. It kind of ends on a sweet note though, as both she and V kiss goodbye and with the new patch, you'll get messages from her. And even when you sleep at the Nomad Cap, she will sleep next to you. The romance is fine that way. Just that last scene <laughs> of the sex scene was weird. Moving on. She also has the Nomad ending, which a lot of people have deemed the canon of this game. I won't spoil it, but what's ironic here is after the main mission, there is a, the main mission where you have to help her and she helps you find Hellman the guy who knows all about the relic the rest of her quests are all side quests you don't have to technically do them i would especially if you want to get that nomad ending it's kind of a given you have to do them last one is johnny and i'm sure you're all saying really no v but v was never in doubt of being a great character in fact v is the best character in the game but you also play as the character and you choose every action and decision for V. So yeah, it's natural to say V's the best character when it's your character. Anyways, Johnny, AKA Keanu Reeves. And here's what I like about this guy. He's, it's not the arrogance, the cockiness, or even the aggressive attitude that he displays. Those aren't bad. But what I sort of like is the sort of advice he gets, the soft-spoken dialogue, and the conversations he has with V. Some examples is like when V and Pan Am are stuck in a storm, you can see a bit of an easygoing romantic attitude in this guy and some of the comments he makes, you can see that he's just really, you know, he's relaxing a bit. When Johnny eventually decides to help V live and you choose to talk with him, you can see he has some advice for V and wants him to live. It's kind of nice in a way. He even feels sorry for some characters like the religious nut who chooses to be crucified like Jesus so that people can basically virtual reality see what it's like to be nailed to a cross. Yeah, bring on the blasphemy for that one, but you can see Johnny is like almost like giving respect to this guy and he feels sorry for this guy. Yeah, the, the, the whole quest though, let's be honest, is a little bit weird. <laughs> There's a lot more examples for characters, but they're all awesome and they all fit their roles very, very well. Okay, this is gonna sound weird. 
there's no real big antagonist in this game. Again, sounds weird. Uh, we have this huge giant Arasaka Corporation, which is talked about quite a bit, but we don't really deal with them until much later in the game. Almost near Act 3, which is the end of the game, and just a little bit late in Act 2. But surprisingly, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Adam Smasher, the final boss of the game, is barely mentioned or shown. You see him at the beginning of the game and then near the end of Act 3, and that's it. He's just sort of there. He shows up at the beginning, shows up at the end, there, that's it. There's no indication that he's the big boss, and maybe it's just my years of gaming, but I felt that having no real antagonist to kind of fight dragged a lot in this game. It would have been better if Jackie sacrificed himself to save V from Adam, or if Adam continuously came after V during story missions, but no, he's just sort of there. He's there at the beginning, he's there at the end. That's it. And while, and while Arasaka is mentioned at length, especially by Johnny, there's no real presence about them until, again, much later, near the end of Act 2 and at the beginning of Act 3. That's it. With other games, you have a general idea of who the antagonist is, and most of them make their presence known, but not really here. I would have loved it if Adam Smasher kept chasing V all through the game. That would have been great, but yeah. It, it was, um, it was just, he's just there. Number one, guys, it is the story and the side quest. I usually separate these, either one's good and one's bad, or, or both are bad. I never really had it where both were good. But this really should not surprise anyone, especially from a company like CD Projekt Red. This is one of the best stories around. It's basic, but I really did like it. But... It also has some great side quests. So let's start with the story. You play a male, female, or I guess other, known as V, a customizable character. And then some. Never seen a game where you can figure out your genitals, by the way. It's really weird. Anyways, you play the character origin story, which is about 30 minutes, where you meet our boy Jackie. He helps you become a merc, or he sets you up in Night City, I should say, and you become a merc doing odd jobs. Eventually, you meet Dexter Deshaun, and you're hired to sneak into a hotel and steal a biochip known as the Relic. You get it, but the mission goes sideways as your sort of hacker friend T-Bug and Jackie are unfortunately both killed. V ends up certain the biochip into, his, into the cyberware in his head since the Relic's protective case was damaged. So we're clear so far? Well, you get back to Dexter and what does he do? He shoots you in the head. And thanks to the relic, V is resurrected because it repairs the damage to V's brain, but there's a catch. It also starts an irreversible process to overwrite V's memories with those of Johnny Silverhand. Worse is V can't remove the relic because he'll die. And that's pretty much the whole game's plot in a nutshell. V is trying to remove the chip from his head without dying and without losing himself. The game story, just the story alone, is about, I'd say, 30, 30 hours. Not very particularly long, but it is kind of interesting. You can actually skip all the side quests if you wanted to and just do the main story. No problem. One thing I like about the story as well is that this can be a very easy beat the odds and survive kind of game. You know, you can always have that uh, positivity and be like, oh yeah, V's going to make it. No problem. It doesn't come across like that, though. Especially at the end. Again, not going to spoil it, but the endings can get pretty damn dark. The whole game can be dark. Um, you get the feeling that V is going to die, that he's going to be replaced by Johnny, and there's no way to save him. Throughout the whole 30 hours of gameplay, uh, of story, sorry, there is no way to save him. And it's sort of refreshing in a very dark way that it's not just a matter of oh v will survive we all know he'll survive not necessarily no and sure this can be a pretty blah by some but include the side quests and awesome characters and it helps the story pop out speaking of let's talk about the side quests not gonna go through all of them though because there's quite a lot there's the gaze which i feel is more about combat especially regina's it almost seems like all you're doing with her is just going to go and kill some enemies that's it 
But then you have thing, great side quests like Rivers. He's in a coma, in police custody. He's not getting away with anything. He's still alive. So in a sense, he is getting away with it. Not for long, though. I'm gonna squeeze the life out of him with my bare hands. Refer, come on, man. It won't change anything. Anthony Harris is a sad sack of meat, hooked up to a respirator now. For how long? He has to die. It's the only way I'll be sure. Stop. Gonna throw your life away getting revenge on a brain-dead vegetable? Pan Ams. The Wraiths took Saul. The Brick Brain ventured out with a small patrol and never came back. Sure it was Wraiths? We've been observing their camp. We know they're holding prisoners, including someone important. We need to free Saul. I don't know why, but I felt I could count on you. Judy's. For getting played by her? She knew more than they thought she knew. Couldn't let that go. So that's who she was running from. The woman who hired Evelyn. Any idea who we're up against? Your guess is as good as mine. Most jobs are pretty cool to do, as it's more I found about story and character building and then just you know, go around and bang, 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 shoot things. You start getting attached to these characters just by doing the side quest alone. Also one great feature is how you will get random phone calls to come and start a side quest. Because I remember I was doing a gig, died, reloaded my save, and then River called me to come over for a barbecue. Now this hadn't happened before. So again, these are random and I like that, that sort of realism. They need to do, CD Projekt Red, do more of this, please. Add a patch or a DLC, I don't care. Just do more of them, please. Overall, both complement each other very well. Both the story and the side quest, both, these are some of the best that you will ever experience. Not gonna spoil the, the ending for you, obviously, but I would just highly, highly, highly recommend that if you do play this game, definitely don't skip any lines of dialogue. Don't move over anything. Try and get all the gigs and jobs you can. These are some of the best. CD Projekt Red, again, delivered with some great story and great side quest. Number one bad, guys. Origin story doesn't matter. Worst one out of everything. The origin story doesn't matter. And sure, there's some options that will have unique dialogue options, you know, like, oh, you can select Nomad or Street, uh, street Kid or Corpo, but that's it. There's no real after effect of anything. You just have some dialogue options and that kind of sucks. I like origin stories as long as they add something to the game. Mass Effect and Dragon Age did a lot better job of having origin stories play out throughout the game. And okay, maybe with some DLC it'll expand these origin stories, but right now they don't really do anything except you, you get some special dialogue options and you get to meet Jackie. That's it. Maybe some DLC will patch this up or we'll fix it and give you some extra side quests depending on the, the origin story you choose. But right now, they don't really serve a purpose. So the final verdict, and before I give you my score, my recommendation, I want to say that I really appreciate CD Projekt Red for actually sticking with this game. They could have left this game and moved on, but in the span of a year, they fixed a ton of bugs, glitches, and issues. They added new features like new apartments, some new combat mechanics. Gameplay issues have been addressed and some have been fixed. And I fully believe that CD Projekt Red is nowhere close to being done patching this game. Don't forget, this is the same company that patched Witcher 3 with 20 patches, something like that, with adding extra dialogue, expanding romances, gameplay, and of course, fixing bugs, glitches, and crashes. Not only that, this is the company that gave us 16 free DLC and produced two great, awesome expansions for The Witcher. So, I have no doubt in my mind that this game could very easily become a 5 out of 5 with an automatic buy, but that's for future and what CD Projekt Red is possibly going to do. I think they're going to go that way, but we're talking about the game currently as is. And some people might not like this. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. It made some great strides over that year, but there's still a ton of work to do on the game. I fully admit that with patches, bug works, um, you know, they need to fix some of that. 
The city is boring. They need to add some implementation and uh, activities for that. They need to do more with this, but I am going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 because I honestly loved playing it. It was a blast to play. I'm actually wanting to go back and play the game again. I might purposely wait on that till New Game Plus because we all know that's going to be coming. <laughs> if you know CD Projekt Red, you know they're going to put in New Game Plus. Um, but I might just hold, I, I want to play it again, but I might just purposely hold off for New Game Plus just so everything kind of transfers over. But let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, do you agree with the score? Do you not agree with the score? Obviously, it's a recommended buy. I would say go out and get it. It made great strides over the year. Uh, again, still some issues, still some hiccups. But if you're willing to look past those things, this is a fantastic, fantastic game. Anyways, like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much. And I will see you next time on another GC Impressions.